Namaste, welcome to Nirvega Vidya. In this video, we shall look at chapter 13, which is Kshetra Kshetra Gnya Yoga and chapter 15, which is Purushottama Yoga. Chapter 14 will be covered in a separate video. And the reason why I'm clubbing these two chapters, 13 and 15 in one video is because from the point of view of the net exam, they are not very important. Uh, however, uh, as far as the Bhagavad Gita itself goes, these are very profound and very important chapters. And those of you who are interested in understanding the overall philosophical and spiritual import of the Gita should be paying a lot of attention to these. Those of you who are also interested in attaining liberation and all the other spiritual good stuff, you should be reading these chapters. If your present aim in life is to clear the net exam, you can afford to not pay much importance to these. So with that, let's get started with Kshetra Kshetra Gnya Yoga. Again, uh, this will be a very brief run through of, the, of these two chapters. Now coming to the 13th chapter, Krishna gives a detailed exposition of the Kshetra. As the term suggests, Kshetra Kshetra Gnya Yoga, there are two terms which Krishna takes up and elaborates on them. First being Kshetra, which means the field, which refers to Prakriti or Maya, depending on whether you look at it from a Sankhya Yoga viewpoint or a Vedanta viewpoint. And Kshetra Gnya, which refers to the knower of the field, the knower of all these perceptions, which refers to the Purusha or the Atman Brahm. Again, from either a Sankhya Yoga viewpoint or a Vedanta viewpoint. Now, Krishna says that one who knows the reality of the Kshetra, which is Prakriti, and Kshetra Gnya, which is Purusha, or as we can put it in English, matter and spirit, such a person is not born again. He goes beyond uh, you know, the cycle of birth and death. Now, this again is a, is a, is a curious idea that you find in uh, you know, Indian philosophy where the goal of life is not said to attain, is, is not so much to attain happiness. It is to get out of the cycle of birth and death. So it is not the goal of life as projected, for example, in the Gita and various other, even when you look at the Upanishads, the goal of life or the ultimate aim of man is not uh, presented as going to a heaven, enjoying uh, great enjoyments and all that. That is not spoken of at all. The main problem in life, according to Vedanta philosophy, is not unhappiness. It is not uh, Dukkha. It is both Sukha and Dukkha. It is the cycle of birth and death itself. It is the very Samsara. Samsara Sagara, they say. So it is, it is the very uh, act of becoming. It is the very act of being born, living, dying. The whole process, according to them, is miserable. So the solution that Vedanta suggests, the solution that the Bhagavad Gita presents here, is not, is not uh, a set of actions, for example, doing which we can attain heaven. It is a set of practices that can be followed so that one can get out of this entire cycle of birth and death, to get out of the samsara sagara. So that is a crucial idea that you find in Indian philosophy, where the problem is located at the very fact that we are born. It is not so much that there are certain experiences that are you know, unpleasant and th th those have to be avoided and certain pleasant experience must be you know, uh, yearned for. It is the very cycle of birth and death that is spoken of, spoken of as uh, the so cause of misery. So anyways, Krishna says that he who knows the reality between Prakriti and Purusha, between the spirit and matter, he who knows the distinction between these two, that in intelligent person is not born again. To know that Prakriti performs all actions and Purusha is a non-agent. That, that is to say that all, every action that we are aware of, Krishna says that they all happen within the realm of Prakriti. Physical actions, mental actions, intellectual actions, whatever we understand, we don't understand, whatever we perceive, the clarity of our perception, all, everything that, that we are aware of, all movements take place within the realm of Prakriti, which is rigorously bound by cause and effect, which is, which is an interconnected web. And the Purusha is a non-agent. The Purusha only witnesses. The spirit does not take part in any action. It only uh, acts as the Sakshin, as the witness, pure witness, pure consciousness. This, this and to know that the Purusha exists equally everywhere and that all plurality, all multiplicity, uh, which refers to Prakriti, proceeds from the one, one referring to Purusha, is termed as right knowledge. Now, this is a Vedantic idea. This is not so much a Sankhya idea or a Yoga idea because According to Sankhya and Yoga philosophy, Purusha and Prakriti are two distinct realities. Whereas according to Vedanta, Prakriti, which they call Maya, uh, is, is, uh, is something which issues out of uh, you know, Brahman or Atman or pure consciousness. So they are not two distinct realities, but the same reality which if we are ignorant, we see it as Prakriti and if we are knowledgeable, we see it as Purusha. So Krishna says that 
the nature of knowledge is to realize that all this plurality everything that we think is prakriti everything we think is matter is in fact in reality the spirit it is the spirit which manifests as everything it is the soul the atman which manifests as everything it is the consciousness the play of consciousness is what the entire universe is so that krishna sir says is what is termed as right knowledge and he concludes by saying that the paths of sankhya dhyana karma bhakti all the four streams of yoga that we know of sankhya referring to gnana yoga dhyana referring to raja yoga all these four streams they all lead to this knowledge so he says that this this knowledge that is spoken of is not something that only the uh, gnana yogis can attain by you know reading upanishads or uh, undertaking gnana yoga sadhana shravana manana dhyasana it is not something which is exclusive to them this can be attained by all the sadhakas anybody who takes up any stream of yoga and is dedicated to it he will attain this knowledge so that is a quick run through of the 13 chapter the important terms again are kshetra which refers to prakriti maya matter and kshetragnya which refers to purusha or atman brahman or spirit essentially and he says that uh, the the kshetra is dependent on kshetragnya that the consciousness or purush uh, the purusha or atman brahman is the primary thing and it is out of this that the matter comes out so that that's that's again a quick run through of 13th chapter now next we look at chapter 15 which is purushottama yoga krishna says that one should use the weapon of detachment to cut the bonds of transmigratory existence samsara so again we see that samsara itself is spoken of as the problem he says that those who can discriminate between the jiva which is the indwelling self and prakriti are wise people again a continuation from the 13th chapter where he again speaks of the need to distinguish between matter and spirit to know the reality between matter and spirit krishna emphasizes on how he pervades the whole universe by he he refers to himself as the pure consciousness as brahman pervades the whole universe as the lord who upholds everything and there are uh, numerous famous verses in this uh, in this regard where uh, the verse aham vaishvanaro bhutva praninam deham ashritah so that is from the 15th chapter and also sarvasya cha aham hridi sannivishtah matta smritir gyanam apohananch vedeshcha sarvai rahameva vedyo vedanta krit veda videva cha i reside in all beings in the heart region as that consciousness which causes them to remember to forget which causes them knowledge memory everything and i am the knower of the vedas and the creator of the tradition of vedanta so that's a very popular shloka from this 15th chapter all going to drive home the point that the pure consciousness the purusha the atman uh, krishna when he refers to himself he refers to the principle of existence brahman he is all pervasive it 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 is throughout creation and that is the idea that is tried to convey and he concludes by saying that there are perishable existences all beings the everything that is born you know persists for a while and then dies it, it comes under the bracket of perishable beings perishable existence and then there is the imperishable existence which adi shankara interprets to mean maya or prakriti avyakta prakriti that which is imperishable the totality of existence in itself has no birth death or uh, you know subsistence that is imperishable in a sense so krishna says that there are certain things which are perishable and there is the thing which is imperishable and i am different from both because both of them come under the category of uh, prakriti so to speak and i am different from both and therefore i am called the purushottama the supreme spirit i am uh, i am the pure consciousness the brahman so that is how he concludes the chapter now again as i said these are uh, these two chapters in particular are tiny but they are very profound and uh, if you are interested in uh, understanding them in more detail please do read the original chapters uh, from the point of view of the net exam they they do not uh, hold a lot of significance and therefore we come to the end of this video a quick run through of chapters 13 and 15 in the next video we will be looking at chapter 14 in detail which is from the net point of view very important chapter now if you like the video and you found it useful do share it with whoever you think will benefit from it and also subscribe to our channel Thank you.